All right, hello everyone, Peter here. Uh, I'm out here behind the dumpsters where I thought all the cool kids would be, but it's just me. Um, today we're gonna take a piece of poplar wood and this Dremel and try to kind of doodle some designs into it. See what we can do. I have no experience with this at all, but it could turn out cool or it could be very frustrating and nothing could happen. We'll see. I'm gonna try my best though. Um, thank you for, thank you to Oxygen App for sponsoring this video. I'll tell you a little bit more about them later. And also I'll tell you a little bit more about a cool story behind this particular Dremel tool. Um, but yeah, let's go give this a shot, huh? Take the glasses on and uh, it does smell interesting. So besides the Dremel smelling interesting, which thinking back, I really have no idea what it smelled like. Um, if I would have changed anything about that day, it would have been that I not only wore eye protection, I should have also worn hearing protection because sometimes it got very, very loud. Um, on note on the wood, I used poplar wood, which worked very well. This is something, uh, I, I'm in the chair making class, which is why I'm in the shop. And I mean, it's, that's the only reason I'm even in there. Right. And I had the poplar. I've built one prototype chair out of poplar and I'm working on making another. And this is some leftover wood I had. And I tried working, uh, using this Dremel on another piece of wood that was, I don't know, in some way much, much harder. And it didn't really carve it at all. It really just left burn marks on it, which, uh, seemed amazing to me. Like that must've been some really tough stuff. Um, but another, uh, in every other way, it worked really well. If, uh, the only other downside was that even though I had the safety glasses on, sometimes the sawdust would still kind of poof up, or poof up around the safety glasses and get in my eyes. And I had to blink a lot. And other than, But I won't complain about that too much because blinking is probably one of the easiest conscious movements the body can make, right? Like the only other thing I think that, you know, the only, what other muscle movement is easier than blinking is maybe like a heartbeat or something, but that happens by itself. So I'm not sure, but it, it worked well. This was pleasantly, uh, I, I was very ready for it to not go well, you know, just for whatever reason. Sometimes you pick up a new medium, something you've never tried before. And there's all these things that crop up, uh, that you've just never anticipated and you don't know what they're going to be. But I mean, there were a couple things like this. One thing in particular that I ran into, which I have run into before, actually, especially with pyrography or wood burning, what have you, is that as you draw a line uh, or go across the wood, you you get you think you're doing well, everything's going great, and your line looks great, but then you get ambushed by the wood, and by that I mean. Wood is not a solid, uh, homogenous thing, right? It's got grain. It's got a variation in, uh, its consistency. And I'm, I'm guessing there are some woods that some, uh, the professionals prefer more, um, based on how predictable it is. I don't know if that's the word they use, but maybe, you know, cause there's like lines going through it in unpredictable ways. And maybe there are some with more predictable lines or when there are lines in it, those aren't as of a dramatic change of hardness, which is what would kind of mess up my line. Sometimes I'd be drawing a line and then suddenly the bit of my Dremel would kind of hop, skip, jump across something because the consistency of the wood would change, if that makes any sense. Right? Right. Now, let me take a moment to mention our sponsors, Oxygen. Oxygen is the first digital banking platform built for the freelance economy. Now, by digital banking platform, I mean it's mostly based on an app, but when you sign up and make an account with them, you also get one of these slick-looking debit cards. The app, on the other hand, is also very slick, and one of the great perks about having an account with Oxygen is that you get access to over 55,000 ATMs with no fees, and there's a feature in the app, of course, to look up geographically all the ATMs near you. You can see them on a map, and of course, I was uh, gobsmacked to see how many ATMs there really are around me. Cause when I usually look for one, 
Uh, I can usually never find one, but now it's easy. Also, there's a digital version of your oxygen card on the app, which is very convenient. Uh, you can show and hide your numbers and all your details on there. Also here now I'm showing you the robust cash back system, whether you want a flat fee or uh, maybe like five, seven percent. But something I'm not showing you on the app because it would show a lot of my personal information is how the app can show you your financial picture uh, with information on your spending, upcoming bills and expected income, uh, which is a very useful thing for freelancers and uh, anyone who finds themselves filing lots of 1099 forms come tax season. So click the link in the description, check it out, see how Oxygen can help you with what you're doing. Okay, getting back to the wood carving here, I know I also mentioned I would tell you about this particular Dremel, which I think, is there some other more generic word for this? Like how we sometimes call all tissues Kleenex or all bandages, band-aids, so on and so forth. But I think that's called like a propri proprietary eponym or something. But regardless, this is actually a Dremel brand Dremel. Uh, maybe it's like a rotary carver or something like that. But there are other things called, there are other rotary carvers, which instead of having the whole uh, mechanical me mechanics of the tool and housed in the handheld part of it, they have like a long, flexible spinning tube that goes up behind you to another thing. And then the, the piece you hold in your hand is a little bit thinner. I had one of those once. I like impulse bought it and then gave it to a friend because it wasn't what I imagined it would be. Um, regardless, this Dremel is re related to the pinky ring that I have on my pinky, which sometimes people ask about. Sometimes they ask if it's, I think someone asked if it was like a wrestling championship ring once. Some people ask if it's like a an Air Force uh, graduate ring or if it's, a, they ask if it's specifically a ring from some, Most a lot of people ask if it's specifically a ring from some other specific place where they've seen a ring like it before, right? But no, it's a very generic ring. It's made by Jostens, right? They make uh, class rings all across the nation for, well, this ring is from 1954. I inherited it from my great aunt. Um, she went to, I think it's from Wheaton College. And uh, I also inherited this Dremel from, from the same great aunt. And she used this Dremel for a very interesting purpose, which I'm sure none of you can guess. Go ahead, try guessing. Nope. No. Nope. All right, some of you are actually pretty close. She used this Dremel to carve people's toenails. That's right. It's a toenail tool. Because she worked at a, I think she was like a nurse, right? And she worked at a foot clinic, uh, just helping, I think, mostly elderly people. And I think a lot, sometimes a lot of diabetic people would come in with like really thick toenails. And she would, you know, help people clip their toenails, clean their feet and stuff. But sometimes, I think when you're diabetic, there's some condition when your toenails get really thick. And, uh... Toenail clippers just don't, well, cut it anymore. So she would use the Dremel, I guess, to grind them down. And I'm not sure if I'm using the same bit in, at the moment that she was using or if even any of the bits in the box are the same ones she used. None of, wait a second. No, I'm thinking back to the smell. It didn't, it didn't smell like feet. It just smelled like, it smelled more metallic. I think I was just smelling... I'm kind of, I'm suddenly regretting smelling it now that I am realizing that it's <laughs> I knew at the time that it was a, a toe Dremel tool. Why did I smell it? It didn't smell like toes, regardless. It smells it smelled weirdly metallic. Um but yeah, it's a toe Dremel. Which I know is a little bit gross, but I think it's sweet because you know there's like people out there that can't cut their toenails and she would grind them down for them. What else are they going to do? They need someone to grind their toenails for them to make their bread.
but I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I, did, you know, hit it up with the uh, band saw a little bit, and then the the belt sander and the little tube sander, rotary sander, whatever it's called. I'm not sure what it's called, but a few other tools in the wood shop there, just because I felt like it, and I felt like it would maybe spice up the montage a little bit, and to make it so that the piece of wood wasn't just a boring rectangle, but also I think it might have been an in- just as interesting if it was a boring rectangle, but also at one point I thought I considered making it like a huge pendant, like drilling a hole in it and getting a chain, which is still an option. But right now it looks to me like kind of a ancient artifact that you might find buried somewhere. Uh, You know, it's got like weird runes or inscriptions, kind of almost Mayan um, engravings in it. And that's why I thought there was, you know, there, there were other options, things I could have done to make it pop a little more. The designs, such as, you know, painting the raised surface or painting the nooks and crannies, painting all of it and then sanding it, which would have left the nooks and crannies uh, painted or doing something with stain in that same way. But I decided to leave it natural as if it was some old thing that maybe in the past may have been painted and it all had, been, all had worn off by now. Um, and I th- just to ach- try to achieve the, the, the main effect just by dramatic lighting. If you, you know, light it mo- mainly from one angle, then the shadows kind of make everything pop, which is what I try to do here. I put Danish oil on it to seal it. And when I took the picture there at the end, I, it hadn't really dried yet, but you kind of get the idea. Anyways, thanks for watching everyone. Mm, excuse me. Um, I gotta go now. Hope you're all doing well. Stay safe out there, okay? You're gonna be okay. All right. Goodbye.